I've been seeing a lot online of people getting random dreams and it feels like God is coming soon and it's like a warning for everyone to get in Christ. So he wants us to come in him so we can get a safe place called heaven. And I believe that strongly. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless God so much for our children who are here with us on tonight, hallelujah. Young man growing up, they grow up, don't they, right before your eyes. Oh, Jesus, I just thank God, hallelujah, for his blessings, amen. At this time, we're gonna have our praise and worship, uh, home glory, hallelujah, praise and worship come forth on at this time, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 We are so grateful, humbled, excited to be here to celebrate. Hallelujah. It is such an honor to be able to know the couple of this house, the founders of this house, the Pastor Jefferson, 
It's so hard because sometimes I catch myself saying Deacon Courtney and Sister Kashani, and I'm like, no, no, sorry. I have, to, I have to change it real quick. But I praise God so much for their spirit, their humility, the fire that's on the inside of them to serve the Lord. Period. It is always there. I have never seen it slip. I've never seen it change. Uh, Pastor Kashani was one of the first people I actually met before I even came to House of Harvest. And she was one of the duo of Sister Nikki as well as her who invited me to House of Harvest. And she was holding CJ in her arms. And I was like, whose baby is that? She's like, mine. <laughs> she was one of the very first people that I spoke to and I met before I came to House of Harvest. And to see what the Lord has done Amen. in this house, to see them in service to the Lord, standing and continuing on in what God has called them to do. The calling is great, and sometimes I know it can be weary. But I'm so grateful for you all. Because any time I've ever had the privilege to speak to one of you, it's always been of love, courage, and God. So it's just an, it's such a blessing to know people like that. Because you just don't come across everybody like that in God even. You don't. So we are here to celebrate, to worship, to glorify the name of Jesus with you all as you all celebrate yet another year in service to the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing nobody like our God because it is nobody other than our Lord and Savior who is continuing this great song. Hallelujah. Bless your name. If you are able, you can stand on your feet and celebrate and praise with us. Hallelujah.
thank our God. Hallelujah. Before I call my husband up, I uh, I bless and I magnify God because of the way that God has called me to serve him. A lot of times people think I am a pastor, but I am not. I'm, I actually function as, the, as an evangelist. Hallelujah. But during the season that we went through, hallelujah, the things that God had important, that's why your process and, and going through what you got to go through, everything that I had learned when I was at House of Harvest, when my husband became ill, kicked in. Hallelujah. Because I used to have to be the MC. Pastor had me all over. Y'all get where I'm coming from? I had to do this. Had to, and, and sometimes we don't even understand our process. But it's such a, and there were times that Pastor was so hard on me. I'm like, God, why is he so, but do y'all not know? He prepared me for that season. Because I would literally hear his voice saying, put them feelings to the side. You got to preach today for your husband. There were times my husband would come in from radiation and he's, he was zapped. I can't do it. But God had already been dealing with me that day for a word. And I said, babe, I'm just going to be ready. Whenever you need me, but that was the same heart that I had given to my pastors. Bishop Merriweather, Pastor Hamilton. I remember one time, and I'll share this before I bring them up. I was young in the Lord, and Bishop, I just couldn't tell my pastors no when they asked me to preach. I just, that was unthinkable to me. Because I felt like even if I didn't have a word, when they ask, I'm going to get a word. Hallelujah. And I had had mouth surgery. And I didn't tell Bishop Merriweather that I had had surgery a couple of days before. And he asked me to preach. I said, okay. I went home, took me some medicine. He a, he a testament. Got myself together. And I came back and preached. That was a, a test. And I came, my husband shared with Bishop. He said, Evangelist Jefferson, why didn't you say that? Because to me, you just didn't tell them nothing. Because if God put me on his heart, he was going to sustain me and give me the strength that I needed. Amen. And he did Amen. to bless his people. So sometimes we got to do it uncomfortable. And I remember, and I'm trying not to cry. There were times where my husband was so sick. But he did what God had him do anyway. And when I tell you these three years have been making, proven, building up character. Come on, y'all. Because it's easy to serve God when things go as you planned it. But when it don't go as you planned, can you serve him? So I am not the speaker on tonight. And I'm not going to cross over into his lane tonight. But I have to tell you, I am grateful. And I thank God for you guys being with here to us here tonight to celebrate. So it brings me great pleasure to call up my pastor. I call him husband, pastor, amen. But my husband, pastor, Pastor Jefferson. You don't ever give a mic to a preacher. It's been a good while before you get it back. But no, truly, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. Uh, if anybody's been listening to any of the sermons, I cannot... I can't start it without talking about how great I am, how good he's been to us. Uh, I'm actually up here to give the history, and I mean, it's three years, so it's not going to be a long, drawn-out thing, but <laughs> if there was a start to this, and um, 
when God saw fit for us to uh, step outside of home, he had me looking for some place for us to go. And the first place that I looked at, and I'm being brand new at the, being a pastor, I'm just trying to find something that has four walls and a door so people can come in and out. And lo and behold, he showed me, that, well, I found one uh, not too far from here, but maybe three quarters of the size of this. And I'm thinking, oh man, I found it. This is where it's, this is where it's gonna be. This is it. And I'm just never heard the Lord put his you know stamp of approval on it and then he just had me he said I need you to drive over here and I just got in the car and I drove and I came I was coming up uh what is this Hawk's Nest right here and some told me to turn into the plaza right there and I pulled in and I looked and this side and this side they were both empty so I looked through the window and saw that side over there and then I looked over at this and I'm like, oh man, this this is this would be perfect. I'm all set to go for something that's tiny, but God wanted something a little bit bigger for his people. So when we talked to people about this, you know, they were so willing and so helpful because of what they wanted at first. Well, I'm sorry, well, I'm gonna have to go back over to a little tiny place, but what they came up with for us was nothing but a blessing. And during the during these three years, like I was telling the pastor in the back, you know, and I'm 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 going to tell the truth and shame the devil because it ain't nothing but me and my family right now. We've had a couple people come in the door and they turn around, and went right back out the door. Amen. But in those in these three years, nothing's ever been shut off. Nothing's ever been, never had to close the door other than a COVID related thing. You know, everybody had to shut the door for a little bit then. But through all these three years with just us, and like she said, we, we were coming. As it, it, no matter how we felt, we were going to come because God put us here. God said, This is where you're going to be. So for three years, we came. The first year, like I said, a couple of people thought we were going to do something. And then just when we started talking about evangelism, 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 the devil got mad and threw COVID at us. <laughs> so we couldn't go, we couldn't even talk to anybody. At that point, you couldn't even stand six foot away from somebody and talk. You know, so it's hard to stand, sit here and yell back there, Jesus loves you. <laughs> but yet and still, through it all, God was there. Not like I say, not once did he fail us, and we made it up in our mind that we were not going to fail him. Amen, amen. He started this, and he gonna have to finish it. Well, <laughs> we can't, and I'm trusting and believing that he's going to do it. And this is our, this is going into the third year, so I appreciate you guys for coming. I appreciate you all for seeing. But when y'all come to the next one, y'all gonna be able to just sit down and relax. Right. Amen. Y'all gonna instead of having to minister, y'all can come and get ministered too. Yes. I believe it. I know it. And I'm just trusting God. Yes. You know? Uh I, again, I share with Pastor. There's plenty of times I'm like, I'm throwing my hands up. If I throw my hands up. He slapped him right back down. I ain't told you to do nothing but what you're doing. You just leave it to me and we're going to take care of everything else. So I'm, it, this is in his hands. It's, what's that thing? You're in good hands with all state. You're in great hands with God. And as long as we stand on that level, and we good. We good. So I thank you all for coming out. I got my natural family here. I got my spiritual family here. I'm feeling good. I'm happy. I'm happy. I, this, is, this is about the most this building has been filled. And my heart is just swelling. Because I know I know y'all not gonna be a son. But my heart is full right now because y'all are here with us tonight. This for me, House of Harvest. 
was the the first and only church I ever went to. I didn't want to go anywhere else. You know, I like I like this. I don't want to go anywhere else. We we would go to other church or something like that. I didn't want to go there. Because I knew what I was getting here. I don't know what I'm going to get over there. And that's the spirit that we have here. Yes. We're going to give and we're going to be where we've been giving and we're going to keep giving nothing but the unadulterated word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Because in these days now, it is so, so needed. Yeah. So again, I'm so grateful to you all for coming. I appreciate you guys. I love all you guys. My my head beating. That's my brother. I'm just happy to see y'all. That's all. And uh, before I forget, you know, I usually do it at the beginning, but praise the Lord. 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 He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to go ahead and do the offering. This is so special to me. Um, uh, Brady, you can uh, go to that table right there and offer the envelopes for whoever needs them. But it's so special to us because... I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I, I have to say something. Uh, she, she sent in this young man named Brady over to, I guess, get ready for offering. Yes. Okay. Yes. I thank God for Brady. Yeah. That, uh, that 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 young man right there behind y'all turn around and look at him. Yeah. <laughs> that was our first member. Yeah. And even though uh, certain things pull him away, he here tonight. Yeah. So I thank him God for Brady yeah. being in the building tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, just lift your hand. Amen. That just blessed our soul. He called CJ said, can I come back? We was like, absolutely. Yeah. Hallelujah. I thank God for him. Uh, if you would like to give, there are other ways to give. You can give through Cash App. It's dollar sign, living with hope. You can also give through uh, Giblify, living uh, with hope, Christian Center. Amen. Amen. So cash out, dollar sign, living with hope. And then Giblify, uh, living with hope, Christian Center. Amen. And if you're looking at the live, you guys, we invite you to um, pour into the ministry. Sow a seed as God so uh, would prick your heart to do so. Amen. I feel like I'm not doing offering right. I should ask you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. But as God leads you guys uh, to be a blessing to the ministry. As my husband stated, God has been so good to us. We have truly seen his faithfulness. Amen. You want him to grab the basket? Okay. You want to grab that basket uh, and then come back around? Uh, Oh. I shouldn't have told you I was getting ready to cry. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you. What home. a beautiful blessing you, from House of Harvest. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen. God is so good, y'all. He is, as I stated earlier, uh, my brother with True Smoke Barbecue, he agreed to stay open a little later tonight. For those that, uh, that haven't, maybe you didn't get a chance to get dinner. I know we didn't. So if you, uh, <laughs> my pregnant daughter saying, oh, I already ordered my food. <laughs> she had me tell my brother, we were up here earlier, tell him to put me some potato salad to the side. Because I can't eat this without no, I said, oh my Lord. And then I stuck some in for myself too. I said, well, put me some to the side too. But I bless God, amen, for, um, 
just the partnership with my brother actually because what he does when when people come to uh, buy the barbecue he actually points them over here to the ministry he'll say did you know it was a church over there so he actually God uses him he got our cars and he evangelizes for the ministry when he out there Especially, he was like, if they live out here, did you know it was a church right around the corner from you guys? So I thank God so much just for the help. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So at this time, uh, would you like to introduce the speaker, then call forth the praise and worship, and then he can flow that way? Is it okay? Okay. Amen. I'm calling Pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, so I'm before you to introduce the speaker, uh, and then praise and worship will come up, and then you just, just receive it. Amen. Um, what can I say about this man? Uh, not a whole lot. <laughs> no. I, I love this man dearly, um, and I, I, I miss Bishop uh, not being here, because that was my first spiritual father, and he turned the reins over to Pastor Hamilton, and I have to say that I, I, I believe God uh, truly pointed me in the right direction. Uh, I've learned a lot in just watching him, uh, even before he took over the ministry for uh, Bishop, I, I would watch him and see how he flowed and how he did things and how he acted. And and one of the things that I noticed, and I think a lot of people noticed, you know, you could say Bishop might have been a softy. Pastor Hamden was a rock. <laughs> he was hard. He's gotten a little mellower in his, his latter years, but you know, it was necessary. It was necessary. You know, sometimes in ministry things can't always be, you know, just okay, that's fine, yeah, you can go ahead, you know. Sometimes gotta be a no, you can't. No, not now. It's not your time. And you know, that some people will look at that and get upset and turn their face away. But those that truly are seeking God, if they trust the person that's over them, God will bless them in their obedience. And that's, 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 that's what I learned from him. That's what I got from him. I mean, y'all know him. I, I'm, just, I'm just up for filling in right now. But when it came time for to be elevated to the level that I am, he talked to me, he encouraged me, he gave me advice, he told me what to do, to what to do, what I shouldn't do. Uh, just the guidance that's that's needed. And I appreciate him so much. Um, you know, when 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 my father died, the first person I called was Pastor Hamilton. Does even before I called my brother to let him know that our papa that our father died. Because Outside of my natural father, that that was him. So, whoa, okay, okay. Give me a second. He's just, I love this man. He's been a blessing to this ministry. He's been a blessing to our lives personally, and I know he's been a blessing to y'all. Yeah. And I'm just thankful, and I'm, again, grateful to God that he put him in my life. Because prior to uh, Mother's Day 2003, there's no telling where I would be. But when I finally gave myself over to the Lord and got up under Bishop Merriweather and then got up under Pastor Hamilton, my life made a huge turn. And it has been nothing but a blessing. Amen. Through even the bad times, <clears throat> nothing but a blessing. Amen. So when you're down, if your pastor's giving you some advice and you don't want to hear it, 
Well, keep them ears open and listen to it. Because in the end, it's all for your good. Yes. And I truly believe that's his heart. To bless those that the Lord has put under his care. So after this next song is, is, is sang, I am prematurely introducing to some, <laughs> presenting to others, Pastor Jurisdictional Overseer, Pastor James G. Hamilton. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody, one more time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. We serve an everlasting God. He's truly worthy of all of our praise, all of our worship. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. It's such an honor to be able to saturate and to partake of the anointing in a new house that comes from the same anointing from home. Hallelujah. It's the same God. The everlasting Savior. That's who we serve. Hallelujah. Whatever position you are, would like to go into worship, whether that be sitting or standing, raising your hands, you take that position because we are all here to worship our God. Hallelujah. Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. We give him glory. We give him honor. Nobody like you, God. Nobody like you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, fruitfulness, O oh God, hallelujah, that you've sent it for to be done and manifest in due season. It's my prayer. Encourage the heart, O oh God, of these leaders. Encourage the heart of this congregation and let them know, God, hallelujah, that they're in a race, but they're destined to win. In yeah. Jesus' name, it's my prayer right now. It is in this particular passage of scripture, amen, the third chapter of the book of Philippians, the 14th verse, well, I will begin my reading, as many of you that know me, I am a word preacher, I believe in letting the Bible do what it do. Amen. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul writes unto the Philippian church, amen, hallelujah, uh, he, he lets them know, amen, hallelujah, where his fervor. Amen. Where his passion, what it was that was driving him. 
and it was a man, hallelujah, the thing that was most important to him. Uh, he says in this particular passage, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But then he goes on in verse 15, and he says, let us, amen, speaking to the church and himself, let us as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, oh, our gracious God shall reveal even this unto you. What I want you to know in this, just these few particular verses first, is that he's speaking about a mark. Now, what I want you to know is the mark is to be like Jesus. Yes. I, I, I want to say this because we, and especially in, um, I'm going to talk to the past and the first lady, because especially in the season that you're in, you're still in a season of germination. You're still in a season, amen, of what many would be uh, determined and classified as a season of infancy. Amen. It's a tender season. Amen. And it, it is a season where you have to be most careful that what you're actually shooting for is the right thing. Uh, it's not the time to be trying to make a house of harvest the mark that you're shooting for. You understand what I'm saying? Or, or some other ministry. Amen. That's not your mark. Your mark, amen, is in whatever you're doing that God has called you to do is to be like Jesus. That's the mark. And the prize is to be with Jesus. And so, amen, this is what the apostle is speaking to the church about because he knows, amen, that the enemy is a deceiver and he will love nothing better than to get you, amen, as a ministry, as a pastor, as a first lady, and the congregation here as a ministry off the mark. Yes. Yeah, it's not the mark to be the biggest. Yeah. It's not the mark even to be the best. Your mark is this, to make sure that at any given time, and Pastor, you've already said it, to make sure that at any given time that you are doing what God is commanding you to do. And in doing that, regardless to what you have to endure in that season by way of adversity or anything else, that you remain like Jesus, because that's the mark. Oh, in other words, he said, you know, in times of prosperity, be like Jesus. In time of famine, be like Jesus. In times of popularity, be like Jesus. And in times when they walk away from you and turn their back on you and don't want nothing else to do with you, it may be your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your uncle, and even your children. Be like Jesus, because yeah. that's the mark. And if long as you are making that your mark, amen, you're going to be successful. And so he lets them know that the mark is to be like Jesus. And if I'm going to be like Jesus, then I know that I'm going to be where Jesus is. And whatever it is that Jesus, amen, gets out of this, uh, somebody say, you're going to get it too. Uh, we can only be perfect by a faithful, faithful, full of faith, amen, obedience to God. Uh, this process will only be accomplished, though, with patience. My thought for today is this. In patience, keep on pressing for the prize. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, oh, as I began, amen to go before the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, amen. You need to give me a word for this pastor and first lady. You need to give me a word, Lord. Hallelujah for this ministry. And this is the word he told me. He told me to tell them be patient. He told me to tell them in patience. Keep on pressing for the prize. Hallelujah to God. Ah, in Hebrews 12, 1 and 3. I'm going to go through the scriptures here. It says, where Therefore, uh, seeing also, uh, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Uh, let us lay aside every weight uh, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, uh, and let us run with patience uh, the race that is set before us, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author uh, and finisher of our faith, uh, for the joy 
faith that was set before him uh, endured the cross, uh, despising the shame, uh, and is set down uh, at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, in other words, God is saying, uh, keep your eyes on him. Uh, keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, keep your eyes on being like him. Uh, Jesus was a servant of God, uh, even though he was a son of God. Uh, and his mission while he was here on earth, uh, even though he healed a man, uh, even though he cast out demons, uh, but the most important aspect of his mission was, uh, I must do the will of the Father uh, while I'm here. Uh, and so God is saying, uh, as long as you keep on doing uh, the will of the Father, uh, you rate yourself uh, as making a mark. Uh, you rate yourself as being successful. God let me know uh, that this is a process. Uh, God could have started you off in this ministry 50 strong uh, if that's what he wanted to do. Uh, God could have set you up in his ministry and caused it to be 100, 200, uh, and 300 full uh, in a matter of a few months. Uh, but God knows uh, that you could have been pumped up. Uh, God knows uh, that rather than being full of faith because uh, you didn't go through the process, uh, you would be full of carne uh, and you were son of pride. Uh, and we know that pride goes before destruction uh, and a hearty spirit. Uh, hallelujah, before fall. Uh, but God was letting me know uh, that these three years uh, have been a year of process. Uh, it's been a year, amen. Uh, we know that they were sent out uh, with anointing. Uh, we know that God uh, allowed the former rain uh, to come upon them. Uh, but God is saying now, Courtney, in year three, uh, he's going to send the latter rain. Uh, you started off in three years. Uh, it has been a germination process. And God is well pleased. Uh, you kept the faith. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, I love the fact uh, that I can hear with my ear that you guys have said uh, it didn't matter if anybody was here you pressed on anyway I know it can be discouragement uh, when you have a house uh, that's able to hold a certain number and yet maybe one or two uh, was probably there but we have to be of the mindset uh, you preach to one uh, just like you would preach to a hundred uh, you teach one uh, just like you would teach a thousand, that's the same fervency. That's the press that God says uh, I'm looking for. God is saying amen, uh, but be patient. Uh, hallelujah. Our responsibility is to do the will of God. Uh, God's responsibility that he holds himself to uh, is to do the increase. Uh, uh, tell somebody uh, don't judge me by what you see you better judge me by what the word says this is a powerful man and woman of God and God has not called them to be pastors over nothing it's coming son I'm telling you right now it's coming hallelujah to God but he says look in the book of Hebrews everybody in there that's in the hall of fame they weren't running a sprint they weren't running a hundred yard dash they weren't doing something that was done in one day each and every one of them had their own tests and their own trials even though God had called them to certain hallelujah positions oh, glory be to God and so he says, look at them. I didn't let them down. Look at them. Whatever word I spoke over them, it came to pass. But they had to run the race with patience. I want to tell you something. Being a new pastor, I know there come times when you feel in your intellect. I got to get a scheme. I got to get a plan. I got to make this thing work. But look in the word of God. Anytime a man or woman of God tried to do it in their own selves, 
uh, it wind up causing uh, uh, problems. Uh, glory be to God. And so uh, you got to look uh, at Jesus. Uh, how did he handle it? Uh, be like that. Uh, watch how he did it. Uh, be like that. Uh, and long as you be like that, uh, you hitting the mark. Uh, you hitting the bullseye. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, sometimes we think in ministry that we haven't hit the mark uh, until we hit a certain number. Uh, until we can see our names uh, on the grand marquee. Uh, until we can wear uh, some great exalted title and people, amen, uh, will recognize us. Uh, but that's not what it's about. Uh, don't despise uh, those days of small beginnings. Uh, that's the day of your process. Uh, that's the day uh, of your great testing. Oh, uh, this is what the word of God was today. He told me to tell you. He says, note, be careful to guard the reputation of your manner in ministry works so that the ministry of Christ cannot be blamed. It's never going to be your ministry. Hallelujah to God. It is the Lord's ministry. But God has given you to be a minister in his work. And what he says, God's your reputation and the manner in which you work. But as long as you hit the mark and make sure whatever you're doing, be like Jesus. Don't cut corners to make things work. Don't let your teaching go that you've been taught with to try to make things work. Don't lie your flesh uh, to get you out of the spirit. Uh, this is what God is saying uh, many times. Uh, we think the only sin is uh, drinking, smoking, alcohol, uh, and sex. Uh, but anytime you don't uh, obey what God is saying, uh, and anytime uh, it's sin, uh, anytime you get in your flesh, uh, even when you're trying uh, to do a good thing, uh, you find yourself uh, Rather than being light and ready for flight, you're weighing yourself down. And so what God doesn't want is this ministry to be weighed down. Hallelujah to God. And so in 2 Corinthians, I'm going somewhere. Whether you think it or not, in 2 Corinthians 6, 3, and 4, it says giving a man no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed but in all things whatever you're going through whatever you have to deal with approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience if it's saying in much patience that means God is letting you know there's much time of waiting there's seasons amen when you feel like you're on downtime hallelujah to God because they know Nothing seemed uh, to be moving and shaking. Uh, but I got news for you. Uh, this is a spiritual race. Uh, it's not a natural race. Uh, your body might be still. Uh, it may seem like nothing. Uh, it's moving in the fleshly area or arena of life. Uh, but you are a spiritual being uh, with a spiritual mission. Uh, and if you're doing uh, what God is requiring you to do uh, in this process, uh, the greatest thing God is looking at uh, is your attitude uh, and your spirit. Uh, are you going to get frustrated? Uh, are you going to get angry? Uh, are you going to world throw in the towel? Uh, but somebody say no. Uh, the Bible lets us know uh, just like Jesus uh, he reached a time uh, when he knew what he was getting ready to go through. Uh, I'm going to be forsaken. Uh, I'm going to be betrayed. Uh, I'm going to be tortured. My flesh don't want to go through it. I don't want to endure that. I want to be loved just like everybody. want to be loved. That if it's all possible, let this cup pass. But I know daddy, what your will is. I'm not whining and complaining. Hallelujah to God. And so it says that with joy he endured the cross. The Shame. Thank you, Lord. Oh,
I can see Jesus. I can see Jesus. Man, it started out look like he had a mega ministry. 5,000 on this hill. 4,000 on that hill. Multitudes and towns flocking out to see him. People hollering, Hosanna. Hallelujah. Blessed is the one that coming in the name of the Lord. And in the next moment, in a few hours, he found himself beaten, brutalized, forsaken by all. Hallelujah to God. But the Bible says, because he ran his ways with patience. He knew that he was in the Father's will. That God allowed him to have a man joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want y'all to know something. Guard your ministry. Don't compromise. Don't give it up. Don't allow flesh to ever rule. Don't allow, listen, I want to tell you something what God was telling me. And I'm going to go in the message. In this season, it's real easy to start leaning to the flesh. Leaning to your intellect. There's got to be a scheme. There's got to be a plan. There's got to be a way to grow this church. There's got to be something I can come up with. That's not the route to take. The route to take. I'm going to take what I do every day. What is your will for me today, Lord? Yes. That's the only thing I'm going to worry about. Amen. Yeah, I want to see this happen. I want to see that happen. But that ain't my concern. My concern is, Lord, am I doing what you're telling me to do? Because if I'm doing what you're telling me to do, then the rest is on you. Yes. Hallelujah to God. Oh, but God is watching how you handle it. And Pastor Courtney and First Lady, I got to tell you something. Uh, I can still make a count for you, right? Yes, sir. As your pastor. Yes, sir. Looking good. Amen. Amen. Note, flee from any impulse, as I said, thought or plan that will cause you not to be in the will of God. Not in the will of God. Ain't up in the club. It ain't drinking. ain't smoking. It's just simply not doing. Don't let other people's plans that seem to be successful for them. Don't you try to adopt them. Right. Yes. That's for them. You have to keep what God has for you. Yes. You don't compare yourself with anybody. True. Not even your home base. You don't compare yourself. You don't compare yourself because you're unique. Every part of the body is unique. You are a unique fingerprint whether you know it or not. And God has not made a mistake. And one thing I do know by the word of the Lord, this ain't it. God has something greater for you. Amen. But what I want you to do is continue appreciating what God has given you. Amen. Yes. Remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah to God. Amen. This is the word, part of the word that God gave me to give to you. Amen. Uh, it, to it tells us, amen. Hallelujah, 1 Timothy 6, 11 and 12. It says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. Flee those things that will cause you to get out of the of God. And find yourself following after righteousness. Righteousness is simply this, doing what is right by God. At any given moment, make sure what you're doing is right by God. Even if you ain't got number five members and all five are mad at you, keep doing what's right by God. Hallelujah to God. Because can't none of them put you in heaven or hell. Hallelujah to God. I uh, remember God told me a long time ago about House of Harvest Ministry. He said this ministry will never be and has never been, amen, uh, dependent upon the membership or know what's in the bank account. In other words, amen, we appreciate people, we love people, amen, but don't ever think that this ministry is going to fold, amen, or be kept open because of the people that's in it. Come it's on. God. Bishop Whittier told me this, amen, and I thank God for him, amen. He said God had never started the church he could not afford. Come on. That's why we in this community in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, don't allow intimidation because people will try to intimidate you, especially if they think that you're 
financially dependent upon them. Amen. We're thankful for the giving. We're thankful, amen, hallelujah, but we're not dependent upon you. We're dependent upon Almighty God. If you keep on being dependent upon God, you're going to stay on the boy, and God's going to continue to bless you. Amen. amen. Hallelujah to God. And so it says, follow after righteousness, godliness, which is simply holiness. Stay holy, y'all. Faith. Keep remain in the faith. And don't fall from that love and patience and meekness. You must have patience and you've got to have it in the spirit of humility. Oh, but I want to encourage you in the 12th verse, amen, of 1 Timothy 6 and 12, it says to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life where unto thou art called. Hallelujah, that's part of the high calling. Glory be to God and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. You guys have years of experience in ministry. You're not rookies. You have a record, amen, that is bona fide. It shows that you're good soldiers in the name of Jesus. Don't ever think, amen, because this church chain overflowing right now, that you're not good at what you do. The devil is a lie. Your record proves different. Hallelujah to God. You have not been demoted and you are not a failure. I know sometimes as a pastor you can walk into a building and especially amen when things are not seemingly going right because we all want things to go a certain way and when they're not going that way sometimes amen in self pity we can feel like we're losers like we're a failure how can you be a failure when you're doing what God has told you to do in the name of Jesus and long as you keep on doing that, I want to encourage you. Keep on pressing. Hallelujah to God. But you press in patience. You don't get anxious for nothing. You just stay the course. Know that this is a marathon. The race isn't given to the swift, nor to the strong. You be the one that endures to the end. Endure in the will of God. Whether anybody want to follow you or not, you endure like a good soldier because what God is going to do in the end, amen, he's not going to rate you on how big your building was. He's not going to rate you on what you've done by way of works. He's going to rate you by your nature. Will they find faith? Hallelujah. And so, note, Hold on to your faith. Amen. The Lord told me to tell you this, Pastor and First Lady. I got to take a drink, good, all right? Amen. <laughs> I quality H2O. <laughs> this is the word he gave me. He says, hold on to the faith that you had in the beginning, where your confidence was not in yourself but in the God that called you and his ability to accomplish his will through you. In other words, you do what you're commanded to do, as I said, and know that the increase or the results is God's to do. One planet, another water, increase comes from God. The fruitfulness comes from God. Hallelujah to God. That same faith. When y'all stepped out as passive first lady, y'all ain't know what y'all was doing. Y'all were stepping out into an area and arena you've never done before. Yeah. But you had confidence in the God that had kept you all the years. Yeah. God said, keep your confidence in him and never in yourself. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. As long as you do that, hold fast to your faith. Fight a good fight of faith. Ever going forward, even when God takes you back, yeah. that's still a step forward. Yeah. You hear me? Hallelujah to God. And so, it says, hold on to it. I'm almost through. In Hebrews 10, 35 and 39, it says, cast not away, therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. 
that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise for yet a little while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man, God says, draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But in verse 39 it says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And I want to encourage you, be patient, hallelujah, and keep on pressing forward to the mark. The mark is not to be able to one day boast. I got 50 faithful members. Come on, I got 100 come on. faithful members. I got 1,000 faithful members. Yes. That's not the mark. Even though it's a good thing to have, but we all love to see progress. But your mark as a pastor is to do the will of God. Your mark as a first lady and an evangelist is to do the will of God. The results is God's responsibility. But here's the word of God here let me know that because you're faithful servants, he's going to allow you to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So there he is going. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. James 1, 3 and 4. <clears throat> Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Here is my final note, and I have one last scripture for you. It's coming. <laughs> Just wait and see. Believe God in this word. Yes, Lord. Believe God in this word, and you will be established, and you will prosper. Yes. So says Second Chronicles twenty twenty, yes. James five seven and eight. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and had long patience for it, until he received the early and the latter rains. Be also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Pastor First Lady, I need you to stand up. I need y'all to stand up. Amen. Y'all stand out there, please. If you don't mind. Hallelujah. Do y'all have oil? Okay. Can you give me that oil? I don't have to put some oil on there. Thank you. The Lord told me. That when it comes to harvest, there's a first rain and then there's a latter rain. The first rain is the rain that brings about germination. You don't see much. It finally comes a time you may see a little bud, but it ain't looking like much. Amen. It's germination. There's times that when you're planting, ain't nothing moving. Even though the rain has watered it, nothing is moving. But that's a time of germination. That's the time where the seed is being processed and prepared for maturity to be able to come forward and grow. So that when God sends the latter rain, which is the rain that brings it into maturity and perfection, it'll be able to handle it. Amen? Too much water can kill it in that early stage. And that's what God has not allowed for you to in this ministry. But now God is saying he's going to send a lot of rain on you. <laughs> Y'all know I don't play games. <laughs> I don't believe in all that. I believe in truth. And I'm letting you know. It's still the process. Three years seem like a long time, but it's not long. It's really not long. It's really not long, but it's long enough. Amen. Raise your hands. I want to pray for you. Y'all pray for me. Point your hand toward this pastor, first lady, father. As we lay hands upon this homegrown seed that you called, amen, to be a husband, called to be a pastor. I pray God even now for the shower of the last. Ah, Koshai. 
in latter rain to be released upon his life and upon this ministry. Thank you for his steadfastness. Thank you for him not giving up and closing the door. Thank you, God, for in this season how he continued to search you and continue to want to serve you. Even in the midst of adversity, even when he had an excuse, God, to where he could have closed the door and say, I'm sick and therefore I cannot do this. But he stayed the course, God. Hallelujah to God. And so God bless him accordingly. It's my prayer of this day in the mighty name of oh, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, oh, shout him out. Glory. Oh, mm. oh, bless this soldier. Oh, God. Yeah, glory. For your abiding is so Lord. Thank you for God for making her, making her steadfast and unmovable. Thank you, God, for making her a pillar, God, not only at home, but here at home, God, in Living with Hope Ministries. Lord, you know, God, that she wants to see success. She wants to see prosperity. She wants to see growth for God. In the mighty name of Jesus. She wants to see God fruitfulness of the labor, God. And needing to know, even as a husband, that the labor is not in vain. But Lord, you had him in a season of patience, a season of waiting, a season of the trying of their faith to see God if they will get in their flesh or if they would stay in your spirit. And now, God, because they've remained, shout with them, God. Ah! Yeah, God, God, in Jesus' mighty name. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Come on, church, praise him. It's coming. You might be an unbeliever, but I believe, therefore, have I spoke for him back. It's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever be ashamed. If you're in the will of God, if you're not in the will, be ashamed. But if you're in the will of God, never be ashamed. You don't owe anybody, hallelujah, an explanation. You're not doing this for anybody other than the Lord. You're not doing this to get fame or acclaim for men. You're doing this because you love the Lord. And you love what he loves. And God knows, amen, that you are caring and nurturing people. And he will send and place into your hands souls. Hallelujah to God. To bring forth, to nurture, and to grow in the kingdom. I know you're anxious because you got so much in you. I know you want to see it because you put so much work forward. But God is saying, it's coming. He's saying, but be patient. If your mind is going, Lord, how long is long? You're not patient. If you're saying, Lord, it's been too long, you're not patient. Patience in your patience. God says, possess ye your souls. In your patience, get a grip on yourself. In a patience, amen, in your patience, gird up the loins of your mind and say, I'm going to stay, amen, in this race. Even when it seems like others are passing me up, this ain't no competition. Hallelujah to God. It's not flesh against flesh. Hallelujah to God. Your spiritual calling is not a fleshly calling, pastor. God has not made a mistake. I know he ain't made a mistake. So you keep on pressing. You preach like you're preaching to a thousand. You teach like you're teaching to a thousand. Hallelujah. You treat this place here like it's a grand cathedral. Amen. Hallelujah. And never be ashamed of it. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Appreciate what God has done and keep on pressing. When it seems like don't nobody want to hear what you got to say, keep on pressing. When it seems like you may be getting on people's nerves, 
because God keep giving you the same message time and time again. Be patient. God is doing a work in you. And whether you know it or not, he's doing a work in somebody. Hallelujah to God. Oh, glory be to God. It lets us know, amen, oh, that God is going to allow you to receive the latter rain. In other words, God has not started you and then going to allow you to fail. Glory be to God. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one who started this thing and he's the one that's going to be the one to finish it glory be to God I got news for you there's going to come a day when your very family is going to look at y'all and all ah, and they're going to know that they didn't do this this was a God thing that made this hallelujah living with hope family I want y'all to know something right now you look at the ministry and if you're not careful, you'll make this your ministry. And when people start coming in, uh, you will begin to treat them uh, like they're invaders uh, of your thing. Uh, but that's not the way God wants it. Uh, you may be foundational members, uh, but you are not the ones, uh, hallelujah, that run it. Uh, you're not the one that says uh, where it comes and where it goes. Uh, you're just part of the puzzle, uh, part of the body. Just be willing to fit in. If God sent some people in here, I got a preacher that's more anointed to you. Even though you've been here since the beginning, you just keep the very and stay faithful to God and know that God is going to reward you for your labor and love. It's not a place for jealousy. It's not a place for envy. It's a place of rejoicing. Be willing to accept people to come into the ministry and let them make themselves at home. I got a word for living with hope. It's not your thing. It's a God thing. As long as you keep that mindset, God is going to bless. God wants you to know that even though you're important, you're not that important. He wants us to be humble in the house of the Lord. Glory be to God. Who is his word for today? Our glory. You ready for the growth? The living hope. Get ready for the growth. That's why God is sitting in his world. He's saying, get ready for the growth. Get ready for it. When people come in here, get ready for it. Let God do what he's going to do with them. Let God use them in a way they want to use them. And don't be jealous, but rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where your family at, Pastor? I know y'all ready to go. Where your family? I need you to come up here. Children. Your family. Just bring them up here real quick. Children. Please, I know y'all busy. I know y'all working too. But I got to be obedient to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to pray for you. you Amen. I want to pray for you. It's important. It's important. It's important. Thank you, Jesus. Where did Mimi go? Did she go? She had to go. She busy. I need to pray for you real quick. I don't mean in public, Pastor, but I got to pray for you. Amen. We're going to dismiss in a few. Be patient and keep pressing. Pressing does not mean you're impatient. Pressing does not mean that you're pressured. That's not the pressing God is talking about. Pressing means just keep going forward. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing at any given time. That's the press. Amen. I'm praying for the family because of this. Because I see where error can come in at. Sometimes when we start ministries, especially when it's this family, they're your initial nucleus. And of course, you're dependent upon them and stuff like that. 
But then when God starts sending sheep to the house, the family's attitude can shift and they can then become kings and princesses. You understand what I'm saying? And take on an attitude that will call some churches and have called some churches that maybe could have grown, but they diminished. And it's because the family didn't understand their position and their attitude was the most important thing. There are going to be people that come in this church. Come on in here. I'm saying this to y'all because you're getting ready to grow. There are going to be people that come into this church. You've been your mother's and father's children. You've been your mother's and father's sons and daughters. And you've done that son and daughter job. But as God sent people in here, he's sending them in here to be their children. And just like in the natural, when you've been the oldest child and the baby comes in and you use it at attention, amen, if you're not conditioned right in your mind, there starts to become friction and jealousy. And as God began to send people in here to put up under their care, it may seem like you guys are being pushed back and forgotten and maybe not appreciated. And if you're not careful with your attitude, you can be the very one that calls what God is building to be destroyed. You have to be willing to allow those new ones to come in and allow them to take care and to give the care Make them feel important. Make them feel needed. Let them see, amen, that they're wanted. There be times when you might feel like you should be getting recognized. And they're going to be recognizing somebody else. You got to realize. Don't go there with your mind and your heart. Amen. You have to stay spiritual. You have to stay humble. You have to stay meek. Here's the mark. As I told your father and mother, your pastor and first lady. The mark is at any given situation or time in this ministry in your walk with God that you're doing whatever you're doing as if you were the Lord. You have to do it in his spirit. And as long as you're doing that, this is why the people in Jesus' day were jealous. The leaders that were in place because he wasn't paying them no attention. He wasn't giving them the praise. He wasn't making them feel good and putting them up on the stage. He was telling them basically, those that are whole don't need a physician. These people are sick. I need to pay attention to them. This ain't the time for acknowledgement for y'all. If y'all are doing the will of God, you're going to get your acknowledgement up in heaven. Amen. So I want to encourage y'all family. Let me lay hands on you real quick, please. I'm going to dismiss y'all. I know y'all want to go. I'm going to turn you back into the hands of your, your pastor and Oh, he already put oil on him? See, I didn't see that. That's okay. Don't make this a family church. Don't make this a family church. We're going to lock it down. Don't make this a family church. Be glad that you're part and a family in the church. Don't take on the mindset that we the first family. Take on the mindset that we the servant to whatever family comes in here. Amen. That's the spirit of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands upon these vessels. I thank you for their lives. I thank you, God, for them being here today. I know that they're yet in the process and you're yet working on them. I pray that you will bless them to be found in you, God, never having their own righteousness but the righteousness of God, which is by Christ Jesus. Place in them a spirit, God, of fervency, of press. Let them know they're not doing it for mom and daddy, but they're doing it unto the Lord. And Lord, that you are the one that will reward them. You are the one that will bless them. You are the one that's going to take care of them. And that no labor, God, is in vain. It's done in your name and the right spirit. Bless them, God. In this season, send that water, send that rain upon this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. And let it be what you're calling for it to be. Let them remain patient, God, and watch and wait and see what you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name is my prayer. Amen and amen.
Congratulations, guys, on three years. Congratulations on three years. Can we give God a hand praise for such an awesome, awesome, awesome word? Hallelujah. I got to share something with what Pastor just uh, ministered. Um, we, like I said, we've been through different little things in the ministry in the three years and it, it has been for process mm -hmm. and I remember um, and I'm just being totally transparent when we first began our children was like there you know they were there 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 yeah. then all of a sudden they started dropping off for various reasons and it not, wasn't always necessarily that they didn't have a heart to be here with us and I remember uh, my oldest daughter, I call her Prophet Mimi, but y'all know her, how she is. She just tell you the truth. And so, and it was something I had not noticed. She said, Mama, y'all have gotten so comfortable with just us. She called me out on that. And I didn't even realize I did. I was, we was just coming to church. It was us and our kids. And, and when God started kind of this moving and then it was me and him, he, I had to literally search my heart. I said, God, that's true. I've been so comfortable and content with my husband and my children that I'm not even focused it ain't even supposed to be about us. So what pastor said is so true. And my daughter, I called her one day, you know, I was just fussing and I would, I ain't gonna lie, I was trying to make them feel guilty. <laughs> so they would come on back and, you know, trying to make them children feel guilty. And God had her tell me, mama, do you think maybe that that's just God? Because y'all too comfortable with us. She said, and y'all won't go get nobody else. Because it's just us. And so I thank God confirmation. Because that is exactly what you can do. You will get comfortable with just your little circle. And you will forget that is not why God called us. So I thank God for the word. I'm definitely going back listening. Amen. And I'm going to take note because I believe God wants us to be successful. If we will hear him and obey him. So I thank God. You know, sometimes God can see things coming that we cannot see. And he will tell you in advance, you got to watch out for this. And it ain't even necessarily the children. It could. It was me. He didn't even know it, it was me being comfortable with just us. Amen. So I thank God for the word. I'm going to call, turn you over into the hands of Pastor Jefferson. Amen. And he will give us our benediction. Praise the Lord. Oh, okay. Uh, Again, I'm I'm thank you, Pastor. Uh, thank you, family, for for just celebrating this with us. Um, I was talking to Pastor the other day, and you know, one of those frustrating moments came into play, and I went to God, and God had me look up the number three, and how it is a number that is a number of completion, not to the degree of the number seven but of completion. And then God, God told me, he said, when they put me on the cross and when I gave up the ghost, they thought I was dead for three, three days and three nights. They thought I was dead, but yet they did not realize that the life was getting ready to come at, the, at three. 
So I be, I'm believing what was preached tonight that the life is getting ready to come in. And I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. Three years of preparing for it. I still will be leaning on it. But I'm just grateful. That's all I can say is grateful. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm not going to hold you any longer. I believe we have little cupcakes in the back uh, for anyone that would like to grab onto one. Um, I don't know if Peron is still out. Pastor Peron is still out. If anybody needs any barbecue, any food like that, go to trip home. We, we're just, we just thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, praise and worship team. Y'all did excellent. We yes. love y'all. My band. I remember every last one of y'all when y'all about that tall. <laughs> now one getting ready to have one that tall. Yes. One getting ready to get married. And one married over here. Wow. He coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Again, thank you guys for coming out. If you all would just stand, if you're able, we're just going to pray and dismiss in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the trying of our faith, oh God, for these three years. And we thank you, Lord, because now we can see the fruit of that trying patience. We see, Lord God, what you have planned and what you will do. And we're prepared, Lord. And we're going to keep you first. We're going to keep you in the head, Lord God. And we will just continue to give you glory and take none for ourselves. We appreciate you for being with us here tonight. We thank you for the vessel that you used tonight, Lord God. We thank you for that word, that confirming word, Lord God. And we pray that as we leave this place, Lord God, you protect each and every last one of us as we go to our different destinations. And Father, we will be so careful and so grateful to give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are dismissed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.